So sadly, it still is a terrible uh, scourge in our society throughout Essex County and Massachusetts and, and uh, the nation. What's uh, changed since then, since 2005, 2006, is that I think there's more of a dialogue, which really wasn't happening back then. We tried very hard to have to take the shame out of this because it affects families in so many different ways, not just the user. Um, I think as a result of that increased dialogue, we have more programs readily available for people who are suffering from the throes of addiction. Uh, I think people understand that from a law enforcement point of view, we're not looking to incarcerate people who are charged with possession. We're looking to help them get help, and the criminal justice system has done a good job in the start of that process to get people assistance and help, uh, you know, for their, you know, for what they're suffering through. I wish we had more programs. Unfortunately, I wasn't surprised at the numbers, uh, and I feel badly about that. We have, you know, we get monthly updates, uh, often weekly updates, but I get real-time information from the local and state police about the opiate overdoses, not just deaths, but non-lethal uh, non overdoses. So, I, I'm in f and again, unfortunately, it wasn't a surprise to me. I, I think it just calls again for the further need for the treatment option for a tough prosecution. I'm disappointed and concerned that num the numbers keep rising uh, throughout the state. Um, we're on a pace to break last year's record with respect to opiate deaths, and, uh, and that's why I think we're all working feverishly to try to find s different solutions. In terms of the people who are selling drugs, I have absolutely no quarter, I'll give no quarter in the prosecution of that. I think the, in Massachusetts we are not targeting people who are users. We're not going after people for possession. It's the traffickers, it's the people selling big weight um, who are spreading the poisons in the streets. And I've said numerous times, destroying communities bit by bit, street by street. And those individuals have to be dealt with in the harshest possible terms. The set, we don't need sentence reform. We need to maintain and keep mandatory minimums because, again, it's important to highlight mandatory minimums apply only to people who are traffickers, big weight, people who are addicted and suffering the throes of addiction. We get treatment for, make every effort to help them get treatment. Cuts across the board. Last year, we have 34 cities and towns in Essex County. We had a heroin-related incident in every single city and town, whether it was an overdose or a crime committed or somebody who was a victim of a crime, a housebreak, a, 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 a purse snatching. So it affects every single community. It's not uh, at all uh, relegated to an urban center. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a child of the 70s, the early 70s. You used to think of the person in the back alley in a dirt alley with a needle in their arm. It's not that way uh, anymore. I've given a lot of thought to this, and to your question. I think that we need the, the, uh, the will to, to devote more resources. It's got to be expensive, but unless or until we have treatment on demand, I think we'll continue to have this problem. And again, it's going to take a lot of uh, political will and a lot of uh, capital to provide the assistance for people who feel that they're slipping or, need, or they need help. Uh, treatment on demand is number one. It, it has to happen, in my opinion, to get people help who need it for, for their terrible disease.